Hello and welcome to my second painting video. In this one I will be painting Jill Valentine from the Resident Evil Steamforge Games um, box set. Uh, this is the base game, Jill Valentine. And again a very nice sculpt. So I've already done the first two stages that I talked through in the first video with Chris Ridgefield, which is given the mini a wash, as in a bit of soapy water and a scrub with an old toothbrush that will get it off for the release agent um, that was left on the mould and a base coat uh, this was done with um, Brain Master Beige which is a base coat by Army Painter so first stage I'm going to do well, go through the paint so, um, sort of just winging it for her uh, vest. I'm going to go for apothecary white because it's sort of a bluey greyish tint. Her trousers are going to be uh, uh, coloured or sky. Her hair is going to be Rhinox hide. Her belts and gun holster, and boots, and gloves, and weapon are all going to be done in contrast black legion. Her badge on her hat and on her arm, on her shoulder, is going to be cantor blue. Her flesh is going to be um, Canyon Flesh Tone and the stars inside the badges are going to be Avalanche Sunset. Uh, we'll, I'll tell you the um, paints I used to highlight when we get to those stages. So what I'm going to do first is get our uh, Coloured or Sky. Give it a shake. So I've given that pot a shake. And I've opened it up, we get a little bit on the brush, put it on our white palette, put it down a tiny bit, not too much, just to get it to flow better. And just start doing that low, low trousers. And then get good coverage. Then we'll get that blue in. Okay, so that's done. I think I feel like that the trousers are a bit too light, so I'll probably darken them down with non oil. But next, I'm going to do uh, the vest. First, I'm going to use for the crew white, and this would give it a sort of a grey bluish tint to it. So, give it a shake. Get straight on. Like that, we'll be back once that's done. Okay, so there's the apothecary white done on the vest. Um, next, I'm going to do Rhinox Hide um, on her hair. So I think she has, it looks like in the photos that I've looked at, she has dark brown hair. A shake. My palette. Again, you want a little bit on the brush and you want to water it down so it flows better. And you just want to this will probably need two coats. You just want to fill it in. It's not too bad if you go over the dark blue. Try to keep off the lighter blue. Because darker colours are easier to fill in. The mistakes. Yeah, it looks like that's going to need two coats because it's quite bright at the minute. So uh, I'll get that done and we'll be back once it's dry. Here I lose. Um, uh, audio unfortunately so I will just talk through this minute or so um, the flesh I used cadmium flesh tone and this is just flat all over the uh, over the skin on the arms and the face and the fingers and again water down
Okay, so it's tidied up a bit. I'm still not convinced on the the blue for the trousers, the shoulder pads and the hat. So what I think I'm going to do is go over it, start those bits again with Dark Reaper um, and see how that turns out. It's just, it, it seemed too bright to me. And looking at photos of um, Jill Valentine, I don't think it looks quite right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go over that with uh, Dark Reaper and see if that turns out any better. Paint pot. <clears throat> This is one of the reasons you water it down as well, so you can make corrections like this, otherwise it will get very blotchy. Cover the entire trousers again, the the, the hat and the uh, shoulder pads, and we'll be back. We'll probably have to do two coats. Okay, so that was Dark Reaper on there, and I actually think it's turned out to be a nicer, nicer, more accurate blue. Um, so what I'll do next is I'm going to go over the shoes, um, the belts, the holsters. Uh, the gloves and the gun are all in uh, Black Legion, which is a contrast paint, and uh, yeah, see how they start turning out. This so I use a finer brush, so we want a slight, a slight more control over it. Just get cracking on those. So let's do the shoes first, the boots. This will probably need two coats just to get a nice coverage. I've got to say, Black Legion is one of my favourite contrast paints. I think its coverage is fantastic. Um, but yeah, you do tend to need two coats over um, really light colours. But generally, it's very, very good at covering most all colours. So we'll finish all the black areas and we'll be back. Okay, so that black step is done. All filled in. I had to do two coats on the boots and the gloves and the gun because they were still light colours, but on the trousers I didn't have to, which was good. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use um, Cantor Blue, and this is just to oops, too much of a brush. Not bad. That's just to fill in a little bit of the badge. So there's a badge on her shoulder and on her hat. Very delicately, delicately here. I want to fill this in as best I can. I'll spill it over. And then the bit on the hat. Bit on the hat as well. Small badge there. The badge on the hat doesn't need nearly as much detail as the one on the shoulder, but I will try my best. Right. Okay, so I just finished filling them in properly, and we'll be back. Okay, so um, it's the badge on the hat and the arm done. What I'm going to do next is what I did before with the lighter blue, uh, just to give the trousers a bit of depth and a bit of shade in the recesses. I'm going to wash over it with uh, Drakenhof Nightshade to, yeah, just to bring out some of the darker bits. Don't want too much on my brush, so I want it a little bit more diluted. I'm going to push this into the recesses. Like so. Move it back. And this step is complete. Okay, and there we have it. Um, still drying slightly, but it's given a little bit of depth to the trousers. 
So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash the wash the flesh with right glue flesh shade. Again just to give it a bit of depth. Like so. I'm also gonna use this to wash the hair as well. A little a bit, bit of a colour change as well. A bit of variation in the uh the shades on the hair. And we'll give a better one that once that's dry. Okay, so off camera I did a couple of things. Don't know how well you can see that. I tried to do her stars badge as best as possible. Uh, but being so small, it's not the most easiest thing to do. Um, but I gave it a go. What I am going to do is I'm going to get non oil. Um, I'm just going to run it around the edge of the badge, just because the white surround on like the white surround of a stars badge against a sort of whitey blue grey uh, shirt, I feel it might get lost. Of a black outline, hopefully it will stand out more. That's my hope anyway. We might ruin it, but um, just trying different things here. Doesn't have to be perfect, but helps it stand out that little bit more. Fortunately, the one on her uh, on her hat, I can't do an awful lot about that. It's so small, so I've put a couple of dots in there of. Um, of yellow to signify the three stars that are on the stars badge and just hope that uh that works but yeah that is the badge on jill um if you want to leave it there you probably could pretty decent but if you want to do a few more steps um to bring her up to a higher standard then follow onwards uh, the first thing i'll probably do is her vest itself Followed by her, her flesh, and her trousers and hat and shoulder pads, any silvery bits like her buckles, her gun, and yeah, see how we get on with that. So we'll be back in a sec. Okay, so onto her vest. So with this um, highlight, I'm going to go for a more sort of bluey grey, in celestial grey, and then highlight it up to Uthuran grey. Um, but the highlight up to the through and grey will be very, very minimal again. A tiny bit of water onto the wet palette. Again, this wet palette is by um, Army Painter. Highly advised getting one. Keeps paints dry between sessions. And it does make your paints go a hell of a lot further. I would highly recommend one. And I'll, uh, yeah, I'll finish painting this in and we'll be back. Okay, so that's the Celestial Grey done. So now I've gone on to the and Grey. So I've got a bit of my brush, gonna get my wet palette, tiny bit of water. And this is only gonna be the, the highest points that I'm gonna highlight with this. I think I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of a Podicary White after, just to hit the, um, deepest recesses again just to get that nice definition and change of highlights to low lights if low lights is even a word but yeah she has to that The hand is always optimal here. Again, just hitting the highest points and edges. That's all you want to do. Yeah. 
I have that. Right. All right. Uh, and this paint we got. Yeah, I'm just going to go in again with Apothecary White just to get like just under the belt, maybe a bit more shadow. Like so. And down these lines. Under the arm. And that will really accentuate the highlights then. A little bit of darkness. Okay. I'm happy. Happy with that. Cool. Uh, next, I'll probably go on to her skin. So we'll be back once I get the paint. Okay, so skin. I'm going in here with Caddy and Fresh Tone again. The original colour before the wash was put on. I'm trying to leave some of the shading into the darkest areas whilst getting most of the original colours back. Right side. Again, the top edge is the top where the light hits the most. You want to be the brighter, brighter colour with a transition down to darker for underneath. I'll finish that off with that. Okay, so that's Cali and Fresh Tone done. So next we want. Uh, use the flesh, and this is going to be the most well, the, the uh, upper portions of the flesh. I'm actually going to mix it in with a little bit of uh, the previous Calia flesh tone, nice transition between the two. This is going to be on the upper parts of the body. Other parts of the uh, skin where the light is more likely to hit. Like so. Again, I've always found painting faces more difficult than the parts. I'm always worried I never get it right. But you can only keep trying and eventually you'll get there. But yeah. Right. I'll continue doing a little bit more on that and then we'll be back with the final highlight of the flesh. Okay, so next I'm just gonna add a little bit of flavor on flesh to the very top points. I might I'll probably actually mix it in with the previous two steps, which is this blob over here. To keep it off all the other paints. Don't want it too bright. Not quite nice. Just keep you get a wet palette. Great thing about wet palette is you can just keep mixing until you're happy with the with the transition highlights. So just on the very top, I'm going to do it like that. Over the arms, I'm not going to go down far at all, and then just over the fingers, like so. Where it catches the light the most. Then on the bridge of the nose, a little bit on the forehead, maybe the cheek. And then yeah, I'll probably leave it there with the highlights for the face. It darkens down when it dries. At least I hope it does. 
looks quite, I think it looks quite bright on the video as I'm recording, so hopefully it will not look quite so bright. If you're not happy with the brightness, just go over it with another water, right and fresh shade, maybe water down a tad, and then yeah, until you're happy with the transition. So yeah, next I will go into the um, highlighting the blues. So we'll be back in a sec. Okay, so the blues, get it on your brush. And then just the Because this was washed with the Dracov Night Shade, just going back in with the base colour, leaving most of the recesses in and see how that turns out. I'll finish getting that done and we'll be back. Okay, so next step, uh, we just want to do a highlight on the trousers, so we'll get a bit of our uh, Dark Reaper. We want to mix in some, try some Celestial Grey, just to lighten up a bit. Let's see how it turns out. The top edges, sharpest edges. I need a lot. And just the edges of the, uh, Shoulder pads. All right, and edges of a of a hat. Let's say. And if you wanted to, you could uh, add a little bit more celestial grey to the mix. For the highlight. It's a very fine one. Get a lot of it off your brush and just do the very tip. That's all. Finish that up. But what's looking like? We'll be back once it's done. Next, I'm going to highlight her hair. And I'm going to use more fan brown for this. I only want a tiny bit on the brush. This is going to be a very, very delicate dry brush. Almost a dry brush. Pick up the highest edges. Right, so. And a bit down over her face. Like that, there you go. Can't really see it, but it is. It's not high that on there. That's job almost finished. The last few bits that we're doing is a through and grey. Um, just a little bit of highlight on her um, belt and her uh, holsters. Any, any black bit. And her shoes. Very fine highlight. Just on the curved bit there. A little bit of her laces.
find there's anything. Move all the sharp edges, flat edges, and the holster, and the pouches. Right edges of a belt, I'd say. In her holster. Back of her belt. Don't want to go too mad because otherwise it'll be a bit overpowering the amount of highlights there are. Okay, and then finally her gloves. So, this colour I'm going to come in with is Le Belcher. Give it a shake. A bit of your brush. Wipe off the excess on the wet palette. Here, I just want to capture the belt buckle. So, if I can. Yes. Hit the silver. Doesn't have to be perfect, but there's a little buckle there. Just enough to catch the light. The little buckles on the back. Yeah. Like that. And then there's like little pips. On her shoulder pads. You don't have to do this, but I thought oh, maybe that will make it look. Mm, no, that was a spodge. Let's not do that. Just wipe it away, whatever you're not happy with. Then, I always do guns, I just highlight with a uh, thin highlight of like a silver on weapons. Is it that little different highlight than blues or greys or weaponry? Where do things? There you have it. That's um, John. Ninety percent of the way there. Just got to do our eyes. And that's basically it. Can't see any more clips really on there. But I'm bothered about doing all of them anyway. But yeah, let me uh, get her eyes. Dotted in, we'll come back and have a look at her. And there we have it. I completed Joe Valentine. Like I said, I'm not great at eyes, but you know, might tidy it up another time. But there you are. The heroine of this story. The awesome Joe Valentine. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, leave a like and subscribe. Then share. That'd be nice. But yeah, um, I'll probably end up doing maybe Rebecca next. The other heroine of this story. But yeah, that is, uh, that's the video for how, to, how I paint Jill. Again, it's not really a tutorial. It's more of just paint and see what happens. Obviously, the change of the colour of the trousers because that other blue was too bright. I think this has worked out a lot nicer. So, yeah, uh, again, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and share. And uh, I've also got a PayPal that I'll post in the description if you feel like donating to it. Um, I'll be immensely grateful. It will help um, me improve the quality of future videos. Maybe get better lighting, better camera, those sort of things. 
but yeah um again thanks thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video say bye joel bye joel <laughs>